Well, I guess Jane asked me to speak today about my experience at um, Kopan Monastery in Kathmandu, Nepal. Um, and it was a 10-day uh, retreat at this monastery um, that was in silence. Um, so it was a pretty powerful experience at the end of the time, um, being in silence for 10 days, more or less. Um, and how the retreat was held was um, uh, in the morning we'd wake up and um, have breakfast together in a cafeteria um, and then have meditations all morning and then lunch in the cafeteria and then um, have like an hour discussion group where we were um, allowed to talk. But other than that, um, we would stay in silence the whole day. Uh, so after a discussion group in the afternoon, we'd go back to some more meditations and then have dinner and then usually a more like more of a talk and a directed meditation at night um, and then go to sleep. So it was a pretty um, kind of routine, wholesome experience. Um, but uh, initially, um, the silence was um, not that unusual. It just kind of <laughs> felt like you weren't like you weren't talking <laughs> for a bit. Um, and they also encouraged us not to try and communicate at all, really. So like not trying um, to make eye contact or like hand signals or anything. Um, and then during the meditations, we would have um, kind of like 30 minute directed meditations and then a little break and then another 30 minute meditation um, as we were being taught kind of the fundamentals of Buddhist tradition um, in a very simple way. Um, but after a few days, um, being in silence kind of became a more powerful experience because uh, we were all experiencing this new knowledge together um, in the community and um, I was living in a dorm with people. Uh, so you were very much in a community and connecting with people who you hadn't known before and who were strangers, um, but you weren't connecting in kind of traditional ways of greetings and introductions and small talk. Um, so it was definitely um, a new kind of connection. So on one level, um, you felt like you didn't know the people you were with at all. Um, you didn't know anything about them or their lives or where they were from. But on a different kind of more subtle level, uh, you felt like you were very connected with them um, because they were the people that you were experiencing this new knowledge with. So they had this kind of special slice of memory in you. Um, and I guess one of the most um, one of the most powerful things that I experienced with this silence was um, I was actually at this retreat with a friend of mine who I did know, um, and we were sharing a dorm room together. Um, and she was going through some difficult things personally that um, I knew about because of our, our friendship. Um, but we were doing this retreat together in kind of a strict silence, so we weren't communicating um, or like saying goodnight or anything like that. Uh, and so inside me, with my energy, I knew that she um, was going through a pretty tough time. Um, and as a friend, I wanted to kind of extend my support to her. Um, but that wasn't allowed at the time. So, um, you know, it was a pretty um, awakening experience to try and extend my support with my energy and kind of just like my mental commitment um, without being able to really convey that to her. Um, and by the end of the 10 days, you really realized um, how much you do connect with people kind of on a subtle or energetic level. Um, and that has since been a really um, strong thing to take with me because you then realize how much you affect people regardless of if you're talking um, but also while you're talking and kind of just interacting um, in the daily world together um, so you, I mean it really made me realize how much um, how much I affect the people around me positively or negatively but regardless you do affect people um, just by your energy and by what you contribute to them. Um, so yeah, so it was a very beneficial experience, definitely challenging um, and very rare. <laughs> Sometimes I want to be quiet for 10 days now, but I would be looked at kind of weirdly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was, it was definitely a very um, memorable experience. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, I feel like the thing I'm thinking about if I were to do something like that, is there a point that you had to get past in the silence? Was it, I think like there would be a point a few days in maybe when I just like was fed up with the silence or like couldn't deal with the meditation anymore. 
Like, did you, did you experience that? Or was the atmosphere that you didn't experience that? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think it would have been different if it was just like be silent and live in a dorm together. Um, but throughout the whole week, we were like, we were given teachings on like Buddhist thought. Um, so we would be given like directed meditations. And so we went through kind of all the fundamental pillars of like traditional Buddhist thought and um, in a very like superficial broad way. But yeah. um, so one teaching was um, this, and this was for me specifically, but one teaching was on like the death process, like the dying process. Um, and I mean, there's a point in silence where you really realize that you're alone, but you also have all the resources you need. Um, so this like meditation was on the death process and um, it was towards the end, so we kind of had the hang of meditating, um, or as much as you can. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, so the nun who was guiding the meditation asked us to get into our meditative state and kind of be in touch with our, our bodily functions and how we're breathing and um, that sort of thing. Um, and really guided us through the steps of what you feel like when you die. Um, and I remember that specifically as a very like, visceral experience, like my body um, really started feeling differently, um, like really intensely. And, um, you know, I started like heating up and sweating, getting anxious and stuff. And it was, it was really powerful because, you know, nothing was happening. I wasn't in danger. I was in a room. Like, yeah. um, but afterwards I was like reasonably so very anxious and like nervous and upset. Um, and I dealt with that all on my own because I, I kind of, I wanted to confront that. Um, and that was definitely like a conscious choice. Um, but I dealt with it all on my own. And I mean, like, I could have gone to, like, a friend and like, just been like, hey, I need to talk to you, or to the nun, and, you know. Um, but I definitely wanted to confront it. And um, it was really powerful in the end, because you realize that you can, you can handle it on your own. Um, and that there's nothing dangerous about the emotion, you know, even though it, like, evokes all these negative feelings in you. Um, so that was a moment for me personally. I think it depends on how much individuals engaged yeah. with the silence. Um, but, yeah. Did you get restless at all? I mean, did you have, like, time for... This is in the last day. Yeah. When she did her technology, because I would get fidgety, I feel, or feel like I'd go for a run. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did. Um, uh, I guess I didn't... I didn't really go on run, but I remember I remember walking up and down the stairs like a lot, yeah. and just like um, they encourage like walking meditation and um, stuff like that. So, yeah, I did. I mean, it gets mm, not boring. I think if again like if you're really engaged with the present and with the process of trying to like learn all you can, um, there's a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we were at a monastery, so there was um, like a gompa. So people would circle it, and that's kind of like a traditional meditative thing to like circle it in a meditative state and like have prayer beads that you go through. Um, so I would do that for like 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean like at first I definitely got sore too, like in this position of sitting. Um, but that's something that went away too. So, and then I went on like a really big run afterwards. Because yeah. it was also like in a compound, so there wasn't much place to walk around. How did you find out about it? Um, well, I was in Nepal with a student travel organization, mm -hmm. so it was just kind of on our agenda. Um, so, um, and and yeah, and actually, some of the participants got out of silence in the afternoon. I think af afternoons were optional, but so I was with like ten students and, and friends, and then two leaders, and they encouraged us to try and do the whole day in, in silence. So I think our whole trip agreed to that. So um, that was weird, like being in silence with other people, not being in silence. Yeah. But um, also kind of relieving. It's, it's just nice to not have to talk sometimes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So how was the issue about uh, that you affect people without uh, speaking? Sorry. That your behavior affects people without, positively or negatively without? Um, well, so they gave a teaching about how, um, like, as a human, like, as an animal, you exist on several different levels, um, so, like, gross levels, um, like, I can, like, pick up this pillow and, like, touch it, um, like, very obvious, like, um, levels, and then more subtle levels, like, how you interact energetically, um, so with the meditations that we 